I've finished my in-betweens. I'm now starting to play with the individual timing of the frames. So I started at half a second. Then the change to the cat happens. And then maybe I want to keep it a little bit slower on the cat's expression. Though it's tricky because the, the whiskers are always growing at a consistent rate, right? So as soon as I have the whiskers in there, I really want to try to keep it the same timing. But then once the whiskers are in their place, right there, the only things that change are the icicles in the cloud. And if I want that moment to last a little bit longer, I have additional options for these last free three frames. You know, I have kind of the panting of the tongue, and I want this moment to last longer, but I don't want it to feel like it's just holding still. So this is what I can do. I can take all three of these frames, which are at 0.3 seconds timed, select all three of them, go to my window options and timeline, and this is called animating on the timeline. And I say, copy those frames. This is not the same as copying a layer. And then I can say, in the same place, paste those frames. And where do I want to paste them? I want to paste them after the three frames I've selected. So what does that do? That's going to play them on just twice. It's going to loop just those three frames. It didn't have to create any layers, any new memory to do that. It just suspends that little cycle. But this is what's fun about it. I can have it just repeat those two those frames, but I can also change the order of them. So instead, I can put this one in front of this one. All right, so it goes from this to this to this to this to this to this to this. To this. And I might even decide, oh, I want this one again. So I can copy it and paste it. And a shortcut for that, for just duplicating a frame is right here. It's a little plus. But then I can move it there. So I've really extended that moment once the icicles are in place. So let's see what that looks like. I can also do what's called an in timeline in between. So this is still a pretty strange transition, right? To me. So what I'm going to do is hold down shift and select these first two frames. And I'm going to click on this little in between icon and I'm going to create one frame in between these two. So what that does is it creates a frame in between those two that has both of those frames turned on, both at 50% opacity. And then I can turn the background frame on to 100% opacity. And you see how it's starting to crossfade them. And I can decide what opacity makes sense. Because you're also controlling your opacity with the timeline. So maybe just a little bit right there. And let's make that. 0.2, so pretty fast. Yeah, and that kind of smooths us into that transition. It 
it's an animation that really needs sound effects to help with the explosion, but. All right, so animating on the frame, playing with the timing at the end, that's, that's a great transformation animation. It doesn't yet reset to the beginning, right? There's a big jump between this and this. And if I try the in-betweens, I can do that. I can hold down Command, select both ends, and then let's say do five frames in between them. And then set each of those frames so that the base layer is at 100% opacity, right? And it will cross-fade them out. It's a little clunky. But that's one way you can set it to reset. You know, just because the beginning and end are so different, that's going to be a little strange looking, but let's see what it looks like. <laughs> yeah, it's a fun expression. I'm going to change the timing of these to 0.25. And yeah, I don't like, I think that transition isn't, isn't the way to go. So I'm going to take those five frames out. Again, not hitting delete, or that will delete the layers they're associated with, but just dragging them to the trash. And then... The simple kind of cleanest way is to bring in a blank white frame for me, just a clear background, right? And then how can I fade it out? Well, I can do an in-between between my blank white and my last frame. So let's make, let's make it longer. Let's make eight frames the transition between. And then in all of those, I have to turn the white on. It's a little bit of a pain in Photoshop, but turn all of the white layer frames, turn that layer to 100% opacity. Because remember, GIFs support transparency. So if I didn't do that, and I played this GIF on like a website or something with a background that's not pure white, then at the end, all of a sudden, that background would come through because this isn't at 100%, even though it's just white. That's why that checkerboard is there for you. I don't want to see any checkerboard. And eight in-betweens is a lot, but then I can speed it up, slow it down. And I think I will speed it up. Let's try like 0.15. All right, so you get sick of your own animation for sure doing these timing tests. And then you might think, okay, yeah, that looks good. I've animated on the frame. I'm not so sure about one or two of these. For instance, this one, I don't like how the the icicles get so transparent again. So what can I do? Well, I can turn on the layer on top of it, but just like I'm doing an in-between, I can fade the opacity between them a little bit and see if I like that more. I can even try different layer styles, right? But a lot of them are going to change the colors in ways I don't want. So let's see. I'm going to show you all these different little options you have for animating on the timeline. Okay. So once you're happy with it, 
you save your work, you just save it as a PSD. That timeline is built into the PSD file. And then to save it as a GIF, you go to Export, Save for Web Legacy, just like we were doing our animation tests. As long as it's 8 by 8 inches by 150, it should do this fairly quickly. You can use the little minus and plus here to fit it on the screen. You can play it through. I just use the defaults, but you can play with the different ways of outputting your colors. And it will be a little grainy, but in some ways that helps smooth some transitions. And then you hit save. And it will keep your file name. It will just put GIF after it. So I'm going to save it to downloads and then move it into my folder. I recommend you save yours to your desktop. My desktop is just very full. Then that is saved. Then your assets file is saved. Oh, I want to deselect and delete that last frame I made, but then save my assets file. And then I'm going to close everything except the stage. And I'm going to upload to Canvas my final GIF, at least that I can turn in by deadline. Right. So let's call this the finished GIF transfer for now. <laughs> Upload, go to my downloads, drag it in, and because it's a GIF with the animation script built in, it's all going to play automatically on the website. You can always test it within a browser as well before uploading it to Canvas. But uploading to Canvas is a pretty good test. And then I'm going to shrink it. Oh, where'd it go? There it is. It's loading. There it is. All right. I'm going to shrink it so it, it fits nicely in, maybe a little bit bigger than the others, because it's my final. But I'm missing something of the requirement still. I still need to make a refined storyboard. Oh, you know what? This does set to reset, but it sets to white. It doesn't set to my first frame. So that first frame is a little bit of a surprise just popping up now, right? <laughs> so how can I fix that? This is why animation takes so long. I go to my final frame, and then I hold down Option, and I connect it with the first frame, right? So this is now going to fade back in. And I do in-betweens. And I'll do just as many at the same timing. And what do I need to do for each of them? Wait, why didn't I do it? Let me try again. Command, select them both. In-betweens. There we go. There they are. Now I need to to put that white as 100% behind each one again. And now it will start to slowly fade in my first frame. So this is a crossfade to white. You could do it to black, whatever makes sense for your animation. Or sometimes, like I showed in, la in the end of last class in an, an earlier demo video, you could just play your animation forward, copy all the frames, paste them after, and then play them all in reverse. So it first plays forward, then plays backwards. And that sets it to reset, right? And these are all kind of optional extras to make it a little bit more fluid. So last time, 